You know, uh, we're a film crew from France. From uh, France? Yeah, we're mm. just doing a survey, a survey on, on water and the usage of water in Soweto. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we're aware that you guys don't have prepaid meters, so we'd like to compare you guys and yes, yes, and you, how you use your water. But uh, m m maybe we'd like to, to speak with the household of your, your household. Yeah, yeah. It's my grandmother, yes. but she can understand English. It's fine. It's fine. Are you happy with that? Though? Save the donate for the sake of your pens, I guess. Excuse me. I'm saying we'll sit this side of the table, not that side. Yes, yeah. yes, if you, yes, if you put that one. It's not on yet, right? Eh? It's not on, eh? It's not? On. It is. The, yes, it is filming. It's filming? It's it's filming. filming. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, we're still alive, so we can go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was waiting for that moment when you say, Bye. Oh, you want that? <laughs> <laughs> if you want, we can do it. <laughs> The aim of this project, funded by the Agence Française de Développement, is to replace Soweto's entire secondary network and to install new water meters in each household. But after three years and numerous cases of meters being disconnected, the project was put on hold for two years. What happened? Why did such a technically straightforward project lead to so much debate, friction, conflict and questions? And in the end, was it a failure or a success? What are the political, social, and economic implications? Soweto is both the symbol and the figurehead of the anti-apartheid movement. In the 70s, township residents boycotted payment to the state for water, electricity, and rent. Their aim, and one they almost achieved, was to bankrupt the segregation estate. The movement inspired townships across South Africa and only officially ended with the fall of apartheid. That is the man who the world has been waiting to see. His first public appearance in nearly three decades a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. When Mandela came to power in 94, a new constitution was drawn up. The nation's charismatic leader made access to water, electricity and housing a top priority. The right to water was written into the constitution. Whenever possible, the state was obliged to provide citizens with water. Après 1994 et la fin de l'apartheid, le premier défi c'était évidemment de réintégrer les populations noires dans la société, de les sortir de la pauvreté, de leur permettre d'accéder aux services de base, le logement, les sangs, l'éducation, la santé, l'électricité, l'eau. C'est une des priorités du gouvernement sud-africain et en termes politiques, du coup, c'est pour nous un instrument important puisque nous répondons à la demande des autorités sud-africaines au plus haut niveau. À la fin du régime de l'apartheid, ce que demande le gouvernement français est d'intervenir en Afrique du Sud où nous n'avions jamais travaillé pour monter une contribution à l'amélioration des conditions des populations historiquement défavorisées. C'est pour ça que le programme Eau Soweto était une bonne entrée puisqu'elle conjuguait une approche géographique et une approche thématique et sectorielle qui était extrêmement ciblée.
Some years later, the constitutional right to water became a reality. In the informal settlements, water is free and public taps are installed every 200 meters. The law also obliged the municipality to provide private households with six cubic meters of water free each month. Any consumption beyond that amount is to be paid for. But the apartheid year's habit of refusing to pay for services is deeply ingrained in Soweto. Just one family in six paid for the surplus water they consume beyond the six cubic meters offered free of charge. There were three main things to be done as part of the project. The first one was infrastructure upgrade and rehabilitation. In other words, replacing old pipes that were perforated and, 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 and leaking quite badly. Secondly, we went into the properties of each and every household that we were uh, 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 putting some intervention to do some uh, internal plumbing. The third component then was to put in a prepaid meter to make sure that from that point on, the people on that property would be able to measure the water that they use and pay for it. The project began in 2005. With Soweto the same size as Paris, this was a vast project. The entire secondary network of approximately 200 kilometers had to be replaced. The work was subcontracted to seven South African companies. As a follow-up, around 1,000 township residents had also been trained to install the individual private plumbing. Phase three was the installation of prepay meters. Each of Soweto's 170,000 households is offered a prepay meter in exchange for the cancellation of their debt over the past three years and the complete renovation of their plumbing. This is the first time meters of this kind have been installed on such a wide scale. The meter works with the token. This token, is the, is the, is the customer key to control the meter, to check on the meter for credit, for any uh, consumptions, how much water to do consume for a month, or when you want to buy water, you must use the token, it's the same as this one. A vast program of awareness raising and communication is required to explain water conservation and why water must be paid for. So we don't divide each person which is twenty five per house a day, young it. So from the seven sun in Gasle, Swa convince Avant is Fundile La Payana and then Stony Panen. Swa Nimban may explain a young king to which it is a man. The city council attacked on several fronts at the same time, allowing itself just five years to complete the entire project. The township has changed radically since the end of apartheid. Next to the informal settlements, one of Africa's largest shopping centers attracts clients from among the growing numbers of middle-class residents. But of the township's million inhabitants, relatively few have joined the affluent society. Social inequalities have worsened with huge differences in earnings. My name is Tulani Kanganiso. I was born in Eastern Cape. I was driving like here according uh, for the work, you understand? And therefore, I have to start 
to get my own room first you must buy a bed ne? and buy this bedroom ne? yes and number two i don't have a, a old drop you know old drop ne? at least my suitcase and use some old boxes you understand something like that eric uh, some blankets eh? in one bath for wash myself eh? for drinking for my washing my clothes for cooking and wash myself but i must make sure do i don't i must not use more than 100 liters per day this is house number 5034 deep roof zone 5. my mother and my father owned this house until in 2000 and, and from 1960. Yeah. My parents never paid water. I don't remember uh, telling us that they are going to pay water this month. It, it was just free, to be honest. It was just free, as it is now, although we are supposed to pay. Mm. We've got two taps, uh, one in the house and the one outside. We don't have a shower, we don't have a bathroom, but we don't have a problem with that for now. When I first moved in, it was just an ordinary three bedroom and a dining room. So I had to add a sitting room at the garage at the extra bathroom on the other side, extend all the, 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 the bedrooms and the kitchen a little bit, and then put some new win, uh, extra windows for the light. <laughs> yeah, yes, the meter, this is the meter. Yeah, so that's where you see the numbers. Now, well, since I've been staying here, nobody has came, has ever checked this thing. I'm now staying here for about 15 years. Nobody has ever checked this thing since I've been staying here. When the project started, households were still being built on a flat rate system that went back to the apartheid years. Monthly consumption was estimated at 20 cubic meters a month, although it was actually closer to 60 cubic meters. Technical and commercial losses due to the decrepit network and underbilling were estimated to be around 37%. Soweto is part of the Johannesburg region. The economic capital of the country has an estimated population of five to six million inhabitants. Johannesburg was built on gold, and millions of black workers came to the city in the 19th century and settled in the outskirts. The heart of this wealthy modern city, once reserved for whites only, was made of gold. But without man's intervention, the rest would have been dust. Johannesburg has no rivers and no groundwater. The investigations and reports that have been done uh, are saying that uh, we, we could be facing a, a water shortage uh, uh, by year 2013. You know, so it's 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 just you know so soon. It's uh, if we don't do anything, you know, indeed we we're gonna face a crisis. You know, so we have to do something. The priority for the South African state is to monitor and limit water consumption. The Soweto project being implemented by Johannesburg Water is in line with national policy. I actually operate at uh, uh, mostly strategic level. It is my primary role to actually develop strategy for the entity. About 60 people, I think there are more now. Okay, Johannesburg Water is a municipal-owned uh, uh, entity, and its main objective is to provide water and sanitation services through infrastructure development. We're also responsible for ensuring that uh, the residents of the city have access to these services. Johannesburg Water was founded in 2001. The city was the sole shareholder, but the new structure was making heavy losses. 
For the municipality, Johannesburg Water's main priority is to reduce water loss and balance its books. By 2003, there was a loss of about 440 odd million rand. And then, of course, there was the realization that we couldn't continue on the same basis uh, and something urgent needed to be done. We identified uh, Soweto as an area where they were unaccounted for water was very high. So we had to actually come up with a program that will ensure that we rehabilitate the infrastructure and we improve uh, the billing and make sure that water is affordable. The cost of the project was an estimated 80 million euros. In 2005, the AFD, the Agence Française de Développement, was solicited for a concessional loan of 40 million euros. This would finance the first half of the project. With the funding program, the Agence Française de Développement seized the opportunity to boost its involvement in South Africa. L'Afrique du Sud refusait d'emprunter euh, en tant qu'État. Et donc, d'emblée, nous devions mener une politique euh, en faveur d'un pays, d'une nation, sans pouvoir accès, avoir accès au dialogue et à la relation financière avec l'État lui-même. Et donc, il fallait s'intéresser aux collectivités locales, il fallait s'intéresser au secteur privé, il fallait s'intéresser au monde associatif, mais pas à l'État. Alors, pourquoi, euh, pourquoi Johannesburg Water pourquoi, euh, Comment est-ce qu'on a identifié Johannesburg Water euh, tout simplement parce que c'est l'entité le, euh, dont, dont Johannesburg a favorisé la création pour gérer le, le système de l'eau. Euh, et, et nous sommes arrivés à un moment où Johannesburg Water en était pas à ses premiers pas, mais commençait à s'émanciper euh, techniquement et financièrement de la, de la ville de Johannesburg. Et on s'est dit que c'était un un bon moment pour les accompagner dans une opération qui était intéressante pour la structuration de Johannesburg Water elle-même. At that time in 2005, Johannesburg Water was one of the first municipal utilities to seek autonomy from the city. It already directly managed part of its customer base. Le fait d'aider euh, Johannesburg Water à monter euh, en rentabilité plus vite euh, et à acquérir son autonomie financière, c'était, et je crois, ça reste aujourd'hui euh, euh, un argument pour intervenir vis-à-vis -vis de Johannesburg Water, qui est une, une belle société, une belle initiative euh, globalement, qu'il faut être soutenu. Donc euh, c'est donc vrai que l'approche euh, euh, a été largement financière. Oui. L'approche a été largement financière euh, et peut-être moins technique. Hein. The development of the project and the strategy was crafted by Johannesburg Water. There isn't anywhere in the project where AFD came and influenced a decision. It was all purely the decision by Johannesburg Water in terms of how we implement the project and how we're going to implement the project. <laughs> The AFD loan was paid out in 2006. Johannesburg Water had already started work several months earlier. You can see we've closed the tap, but it's still leaky. We need to leave this house uh, with a leak free. So now we, we also have to change it, put here a new brass tap. <laughs> We've employed 11 people from within this area of Soweto who are going to be doing the <coughs> practical job on the ground. So these people have been employed from Soweto. We're not getting anybody from outside. We as a main contractor, we finance the, the training of these uh, plumbers. The process is, is still ongoing because they are still training even today. 
Previously, the contractor and the SMMEs were more concerned about production but sacrificing quality. That's why we had lots of problems coming to site. But now we've made sure that everything is done accordingly. <laughs> The new prepay meters have to be installed in each of the 170,000 households. This is the first time the device has been tested on such a scale, either in South Africa or elsewhere in the world. The meters are designed and manufactured by a South African company. When we started the project, we supplied them with a meter whereby a user will get the free basic water at the beginning of the month, of which they were given 6,000 liters. And after the 6,000 liters is finished, what, they will do, what the meter will do, it will cut off, and the user will be required to buy more credit so that he can have access to water again. We need to understand that when we went into Soweto on this project, there was a culture of non-payment. And coming up with a project to say, now you need to start paying, it's, it's a completely different uh, approach. Not only the, 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 the technology, but just the, con the culture to say, as from today, you will now need to start paying for water. With the prepay meters, the residents now find themselves having to pay for water that was once abundant and practically free. They now have to accept that consumption needs to be limited and that non-payment can result in supply being cut off without any possible negotiations. So how did the residents react to the installations and the new system? The anti-privatization forum, first of all, is a collection of community organizations. And our main objectives from the very beginning were to oppose the privatization of public services. When we sat down with Johannesburg Water to get an explanation for the project and we found out what it was about, we were told, and the community was told, that Operation Nemanzi was a project to replace aging infrastructure, water infrastructure, to relay new pipes and to basically make things better. We were not told at that point that, the, that there was going to be an implementation of prepaid water meters. What we were told was everybody will benefit, it's new infrastructure, new pipes will be laid, we'll let less water leakages, and this is what the project is about, is to conserve and save water and to make Soweto better in terms of its water. We're not offered a choice. You, you had to accept a prepaid meter because this is the policy decision that was taken by the city to implement prepaid meters. So there, there was no choice offered at that point. Our immediate uh, response was to engage Johannesburg Water. We wanted to find out what was going on. Could we sit down and talk about this and come to some kind of agreement about a proper process? Because nobody knew exactly what the operation in Imanzi was about, necessarily. How much resistance did we get from the crowd? It was just a small group, and it was not social resistance. It was actually political resistance. Okay, so I think you, you, we, we as, as, as a water services provider had to look at it from the business and the service delivery context, and the politicians had to address the political aspect. had nothing to do necessarily with Operation Linamanzi. It was because the anti-privatization forum was already by that time considered to be a political organization that government did not like. It's the anti-privatization forum. They are radicals. They are they're people that are on the other side. We don't like them. We don't want to deal with them. So I think it was politically informed from the beginning.
In July 2006, with backing from NGOs, five residents of a Soweto neighborhood sued the city of Johannesburg. The demands were really about finding the free basic water policy unreasonable because it was insufficient to cover large households and for prepayment water meters to be declared unlawful and unconstitutional. Certainly resistance that will take us by surprise because I don't think the city anticipated a court case out of this. We didn't see it coming. La FD n'a pas été attaquée, il n'y a pas eu de risque d'image. Il y aurait pu y en avoir, on aurait pu euh, apparaître dans les journaux, mais en fait, euh, nous avons été considérés comme ce que nous étions, c'est-à-dire un, un financier qui appuyait une initiative euh, qui venait de la part de, de la ville de Johannesburg, qui venait de la part de Johannesburg Water et non pas euh, une position euh, imposée en aucun cas d'ailleurs par, euh, par un bailleur de fonds. The first judgment in 2008 ruled in favor of the plaintiffs. The quantity of water being supplied to residents was judged insufficient and the free pay meter was ruled discriminatory towards the poorest residents. Judge Soka saw it and we felt that he very appropriately balanced all the legal questions and came out with a very, very good judgment. So there was widespread jubilation. Um, we were happy, the community was happy, the APF was happy. One of the first things that happened is obviously political outrage. Uh, nobody would want to be associated with the project that, that basically discriminates against the poor. So there were reputation issues to be managed around it. In that same week, we saw the water losses going up because we, we, we track water losses on a day-to-day -day basis. Same week the judgment was made, our water losses were going down. And the same week, then they, 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 they turned and faced south. The three phases of the judgment lasted over three years. The final case even went as far as the country's constitutional court. The first question is whether uh, do these, uh, do the legislation contemplate the use of prepaid meters? Now, I think there's something to be said for the view that it does. The next question In October 2009, it was judged that the metering system project was not unconstitutional, as the Constitution did not stipulate the kind of payment system to be used. The Constitutional Court also took into account the modifications Johannesburg Water had made after the first two court so cases. They may not be part of a metered full pressure service. The Constitutional Court judgment was much more conservative than even the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment, which is quite rare in South Africa and, and in the relationship between the Constitutional Court and the Supreme Court. So, we were shocked. We're still in a state of disbelief about it. So our attitude has been that it, 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 it vindicates us in terms of an approach. It says we were not being discriminatory. This was a result of a well thought through process that was in the interest of the city. And it helps, but it doesn't win us the battle on the ground. That we still have to be able, we have to be prepared to, to walk hand in hand with our consumers on. Oh. The protests gained a lot of media coverage and the court cases immediately galvanized residents. Almost half of the installed meters were bypassed. So uh, this is my prepaid meter, is prepaid which was taken out because I bought water and for 10 runs it didn't last. This is where I put it. During this time, while waiting for the trials to end, work on the water supply and sanitation systems stopped in one neighborhood after another. The project was put on hold for two years. We needed to pay contractors in the order of about 90 million rand as a result of having to suspend or cancel contracts. 
as a result of the suspension. And then, of course, the all-important question or message of water conservation has now been lost. As soon as work began in 2005, a communication strategy was launched in the township. Could a continuation of the process have limited the negative fallout from the court cases? Local elected representatives were a key part of the consultations with residents. The councillors were charged with explaining the city's policy to the citizens and with communicating their grievances to the higher authorities. So, lente tena manje zamu kulungsa zona lezo inkinge zinchanga lezo. Kugi nige manje ukuti umai tena manje kuluma ni babu zeyo ni babu zimi buzu ni buzu nukuti de inkinga lez ezenzere pambilim ba zuzulungsa kanja. The people, the councillors, are going to be appointed by the political party. They're not going to be appointed by the people. So what does that do to their function? Who are they trying to please? Um, then the second question is, what can the councillors do? What powers do they have? What, what ability do they have to change things? Saturday and Sunday, after nine last nine months, every day, Saturday and Sunday, the whole day. And I'm happy to say to I call up at the Puma and Man. Every single month, I'm going to say to you, so, with reference numbers, so that when you invite me again to public meeting, Gisho or Renum Farazel, Oguti, what has his cutters Gagana, Guti, Kazulube, Enva Guti, Winigelangit, and as we thinking I go Pumoba, Yakalubus or Guti Ninking and Jal. What was missing in that implementation, which is the fact that you got information, but because we were running in parallel with the actual technical implementation already, what even if you could come across problems, you couldn't decide, wait a minute, let's stop on the other side, which, which is what gave people the sense that we were just ignoring them and going ahead anyway. That was the problem. I don't believe that we actually spent a lot of time in terms of uh, gaining a common understanding of what this whole issue is all about. It was seen as a, a technical intervention and the trouble was seen as uh, something that was imposed on, on, on the people. So when tell us what is parameter of the people, Although the councillors are supposed to speak for the residents, they're often equivocal. And as the work had already begun, the council wasn't really able to adapt the project to accommodate people's opinions, problems, and grievances. No doubt as a result, the residents did not feel involved with the project.
Tunggu Jani If you are great. All thanks a lot. Until this point, no study had been made of the actual impact on residents of this change of policy. In theory, they now pay less for their water. But in practice, the overwhelming majority find themselves having to pay for something that was once free. Can they afford it? Have they changed their water consumption habits? Are they limiting themselves, or are they now managing their water properly? How recently, there's no water, and then when you go and buy it, it doesn't appear from the meter. So we didn't know whether the problem is from the meter or what, but I think definitely that the problem is from the meter. Can you buy food with thousand? Buy water with thousand? Pay electricity with thousand? One thousand? How much is electricity? How much is water? What about food? What about clothes? Nothing. Water prepaid meters. Hey, I need water, whatever. Whether it's prepaid or not. But it's, it's, it's working for me. It is working for me. Hmm. More restrictions. More restrictions. Because like, um, when women do washings, you know, they used to leave the tap open. But now, we can't do that because it's really expensive. For instance, I think it matters to pay because it helps us to get the clean water. Then whatever, maybe if there's a, a, a storage blockage, you can call the rainwater to come and fix the water for us. All, everything they do, they need to use maybe petrol to drive to where we are. So it needs money. So also for us, it also makes us to make our country a much better country because if you don't pay for services, there won't be service delivered. So if you pay for services, it's better. The services can be improved and much better. We don't mind to be responsible. That's why I said each and every person don't mind to pay for services as long as they can have jobs. The problem is we all don't have jobs. We are unemployed. Go. If you want a flash, you block a toilet. If you want a toilet, you can block a toilet. If you want a man, you can block a toilet. If you want a man, you can block a toilet. 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 You can block With the first part of the AFT-funded project completed, Johannesburg Water was satisfied with the results. Technically, it was a success, with over 100 kilometers of secondary network entirely renovated and approximately 100,000 households equipped with prepay meters. Even though half of the meters were disconnected by customers, Johannesburg Water has already reduced water losses in Soweto by 15%. After rolling out almost like 9,000 meters on the ground, we were standing at about 31% unaccounted for water, moving from 40 to 31%, which is quite, quite, quite an achievement. So we believe that the savings generated will be able to cover the cost of the project. And then, of course, there'll be the savings going forward thereafter. After the first loan, the AFD carried out an evaluation to establish the feasibility of a new loan for the second part of the project. Donc, en fin d'année, Johannesburg Water va perdre tous ses clients qu'elle gérait en direct. Tout revient à un seul et unique système de facturation qu'il sera géré par la municipalité. 
on ne peut que le regretter parce que ça introduit en fait une dichotomie entre une structure institutionnelle qui aujourd'hui n'est plus très cohérente. Il n'est pas dommageable pour le projet qui repose essentiellement sur l'économie que l'on va réaliser sur la ressource en eau. Donc on a pu vérifier déjà qu'on avait des gains potentiels énormes, mais qui n'étaient pas tout à fait à la hauteur de ce qu'espérait obtenir Jeunesse Beauwater. On s'est rendu compte qu'il y avait toujours une très forte opposition des habitants des townships à payer les services, que ce soit de l'eau, l'électricité ou le reste. Au final, l'installation des compteurs chez les gens, en particulier après paiement, c'est aussi pour essayer de, de restructurer, je dirais, le tissu social de Soweto pour rendre les gens un petit peu plus responsables. La rentabilité financière du projet n'a jamais été véritablement analysée par Johannesburg Water même si le projet reste quand même rentable, mais pas autant que Jonas Bourmoteur l'avait espéré. Nous sommes confrontés à des sociétés d'eau partout dans le monde qui sont exsangues financièrement et donc qui ne peuvent pas assurer le service. Donc cet élément de financement, c'est aussi un élément, enfin une pierre à porter à un édifice qui tenait la route, qui était bien construit au niveau de Johannesburg Water. Et c'est bien pour ça que nous avons lancé la deuxième phase de Soweto, pour justement compléter le travail qui avait été réalisé dans la, la première étape. The participation of the AFD raises various questions about the role of the financial supporters. Can they be financially involved in a project without being responsible for the project itself? In 2010, the AFD approved a new loan of 56 million euros for the second and final part of the project. A modified phase two began the same year in 2010. The Johannesburg Council incorporated various propositions from the project's opponents. We realized that as a result of this case and the struggles that had taken place over many, many periods of years, the policies of Johannesburg Water and the city of Joburg had already begun to change and had in fact incorporated some of the demands and some of the things that we had said in the first place. So it wasn't a total, we might have lost a little bit on the legal front to, to set a law in place, which we would have desired. But on the practical front, on the ground, um, things were being changed. In other words, Joburg Water was beginning to implement more free basic water, was beginning to say, yes, people could have choices and other things, many of the, the positions we took. We are comfortable that we're actually providing the level of free basic water is actually the highest, probably the highest in the, in the country. In fact, because we actually, we actually moved from six to about 10, which is, which, and all over and above that we had come up with a, an extended social package, which was now focusing on those who cannot afford. Bearing in mind, I mean, the free basic water you, is it's, it's universally provided. So that is how we address that. Customers with unpaid bills no longer have their water cut off without warning. And more attention is paid to social circumstances. The prepay meter has lost some of its negative connotations. No, no, just make a note right now on that phone. In spring 2010, Johannesburg Water presents the modified project to the residents. And then we have new uh, programs that we are going to install to our, this, our new meters. Uh, if your meter is not bypassed, we are going to install a uh, software. Number? 1078. 1078. Mm. But if ever,
but not like ne the way not this is in as a, a worker. Yeah. As in Shaliwa house. Yeah. Kibona ili much better. It much better. Yeah, because you know who re, you never have water and uh, uh, safari kamiti anymore. Yeah, but yeah. More of like no problem. Are you going to change? Yes, I if I see the introducer lay program le end. I think I'm going to go with you. But program le end. Maybe it's going to be worse than your nae. Maybe it's going to be worse. It's over worse than a a a a a a a a South Africa is classed among the world's 30 driest countries. South Africa's other major cities, including Durban or Cape Town, are facing the same problems of wastage of this vital resource. With the project in Soweto, the city of Johannesburg is pioneering an approach that may be developed on a much wider scale. The, the point that needs to be made um, is that this project uh, is going to be implemented across the city. We are going to invest money and make sure that we go to other areas so that this is not seen as a Soweto uh, program. But of course, it will be hard you know to just uh, you know expect people to to just accept you know like that you know people have to put a lot of uh, education uh, raising awareness let the people buy in <laughs> wasteful use of water and the increasing scarcity of resources make the project indispensable the city of Johannesburg has considerably reduced water wastage as a result. But Johannesburg Water privileged a technical solution, namely with the use of prepay meters, whereas the problem was, to a great extent, a question of behavioral habits. The residents probably needed more time and consultation to help them accept the new constraints to their daily habits. We have made uh, several uh, um, um, uh, requests to Petition. petitions and stuff to uh, and so on and so on but nothing has happened the only answer that we got in the out at the time it was because they were still constructing extension 4 and the last extension stuff that is why there was this problem but that construction or development of such houses has been completed but the problem remains because people are saying mostly the prepaid uh, uh, meters here. So they do not understand why sometimes they don't have water when they actually buy water. So this is the challenge that we're having. And we hope uh, you're coming here. Thanks for giving us the information, okay? We look into it. We started discussing it anyway, but we'll come back, okay? Oh, thanks. Thanks, man. Thank you. Sure. One of the greatest learnings for us out of this project is to move away from the corner that we were painted into, that we allowed ourselves to be painted into, of making this project about the prepaid meter. It never was about the prepaid meter. You know, we don't need to take shortcuts and uh, we need to ensure that uh, you know, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's complete buy-in, you know, at a community level. Uh, because then, then you're going to be risking the project again. There's a lot of lessons for people to learn about the real nature of water management and distribution. And this case has shown that actually it's not so much a question of pure 
one plus one equals two, it's not a question of the sums, it's a question of political decisions and developmental priorities in making South Africa more equal. And this case and the story has reverberated around the world. I really do believe that across the board, across the board, this has been a lesson that you do not allow things to reach the stage of litigation. That, maybe that's my biggest, my biggest lesson. Um, you don't allow it to reach litigation because everyone lost. I think the fact that Joburg Water went through a number of very good quality project managers in a very short space of time, I think is indicative of the complexity of this project. So again, the simple point is, it takes time, it's very complex. Do not underestimate the risks, do not underestimate the challenges. The story of this project is also a reflection of the new issues at stake and the new political and social structures emerging in a nation that is redefining itself. The project sometimes highlighted the weak points of South Africa's young society, most notably with the huge gap between rich and poor. But it also enabled South Africans to gain a better understanding of resources and water management. So please, you know, my face, don't, don't show my face, because look at it. <laughs> <laughs> She's tired. I'm really, really tired. No sleep. Sorry. I did try to sleep on the plane. Yeah. But we left on the bus. So guys are here, we're talking about water? What's wrong with yeah. no, Wasting? No, it's a water project. Water project. OK. Which so that will be the good thing, you know. Because it will educate people to understand how important water is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because many people they just waste water like nobody's business. So, you know, I cherish water because I know I need water to survive. I need water to live. I can live without food, but with water, you cannot. I'm for water, <laughs> saving water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.